Brian, it's Glenn with another option for sensing motion on uh, the, uh, the track here. This is a motion sensor, and I brought it for you because depending on what you're going to do with the constant force, you might not be able to sense motion using the light sensor because the constant force carts have the spring-loaded plunger. Uh, uh. And the spring-loaded plunger, uh, the, the, the carts that have the spring-loaded plunger lack the, um, there it goes, lack the, the light sensor to sense motion using the picket fence, right? So to sense motion on just a, a, a cart that has the spring-loaded constant force plunger, you're gonna to have to use the uh, motion sensor. So you just open it up, you switch it to cart, and you plug it in using the digital cable. So here's a digital cable. You plug it into one of the digital ports on the LabQuest 2. The digital port, of course, is the same port that uh, you've seen before, the one behind the rubber door, all right? Now, the way to uh, actuate the constant force plunger is to just press down on that spring release. Right now, it's uh, it's uh, before it knocks over the uh, the <laughs> before it knocks over the motion sensor. All that motion is getting sensed. Okay, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, if you wanted to use a collision, if you wanted to uh, measure the uh, the the motion of a cart that the constant force cart collides with, that's different. Uh, to measure that, you can bring the green cart here, the cart that lacks the uh, plunger, and that cart, of course, has the light sensor in it. So let me go, uh, let me go get that for you from your box. Here it is. This is your green cart with uh, the light sensor in it. You can um, collide with this if you want. Uh, then you wouldn't need the motion sensor because this has the light sensor on the bottom and it will sense its own motion using the uh, picket fence that's taped onto the track. There's a, the, and there, there are more options here actually. Uh, suppose you wanted to do an elastic collision. If you want to do an elastic collision, uh, then there are magnets inside the cart. So I have this collision cart for you and this constant force spring-loaded cart. So the magnets in the cart are arranged, do you see that? The magnets are arranged um, so that the same pole faces each other so that you get an elastic collision. The reason why we put magnets in here instead of just letting the carts hit each other, I mean, they, they will hit each other if, they're, if, they're, if they have enough force, but uh, the reason why we put magnets in here is because uh, for the elastic collision, it's best to um, space out the impact over some time in order for the motion sensor to be able to capture the, uh, the all, all the effects, you know, because it, the equipment is not all that sophisticated. So um, if you want to do a, an inelastic collision, you got to get a Phillips screwdriver from your idea lab or from your robotics uh, tool, toolboxes, if that's allowed. And you got to have one of your students, one of your more um, handy students take out the magnets from one of these carts. So when the magnets are removed from behind this plastic face, the Velcro uh, items, the, the, the Velcro stickers will allow the carts to stick to each other on impact and then you will have, uh, you will have uh, your, your inelastic collision, all right? So let me say that again. You gotta hand this over to one of your handier students have them uh, unscrew this black face here, plastic face, and remove the magnets. You just need to, of course, remove the magnets from one of these. And then when, when you're done with that, if you would please have that student put those magnets back in just the way she found them, that would be great. Uh, now let me show you how, to, uh, how, the, how the motion sensing is gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna plug the motion sensor into the LabQuest 2 interface, and then you're gonna see the data. The data is not as clean as the light sensed data, all right? So I, have, I'm gonna, I might have to show you how to strike through uh, any spurious um, data points, all right? So I'm gonna put the phone down. 
uh, like that. All right. And then I'm going to show you the uh, digital port here again. Open a digital port. There goes the phone. Open a digital port and take the, uh, the digital cable, put it in the digital port. Again, it doesn't matter which port you put it in. And then, uh, oops, there goes the phone again. All right, and then open the uh, uh, motion sensor here. Uh, all right, open that up, switch it to cart. Sorry about that. And now uh, the uh, interface knows what's in here. That's good. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this motion sensor at the very end of the cart just by stacking it on a book or in this case another motion sensor. I'm gonna point that at the uh, at the carts. All right. See, I've got the motion sensor circle pretty close to the surface of the cart because the motion sensor carts are also pretty low, low profile. If you want to do this differently, I mean, you can put this on here, but uh, in order to get the best data, you might have to a tape a little index card here as a, as a wall to bounce these sounds. Do you hear those clicks? Yeah, that's how this motion sensor is sensing the motion. All right, so now let me just do it with one card for now. Uh, you might have to play with the plunger a little bit to get it to where you want it to be. There are two settings. There is a, I mean, this is the, uh, this is the uh, heaviest setting there, the heaviest displacement on the spring. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna change the, uh, I'm gonna change the parameters of the experiment to 10 seconds just in case it takes me some time to get started, all right? And I'm gonna change the uh, rate of sample collection to its maximum. I think the maximum might be 100. Uh, so let me try that. Okay, uh, okay, with this, it's, uh, I've got a yellow highlight here, so that indicates that uh, that might be too high. Here, let, me, let me try 50. All right. All right, there we go. So I'm going to collect 50 samples per second. And um, I don't really care about uh, the absolute position. Uh, so um, I really just care about the relative position. So I'm just going to start data collection here by pressing the play button. And then I'm going to actuate the uh, spring there. Okay, looks like I'm, a, I'm kind of slanted, so I'm, that's going to give me uh, excess friction. You see, the, you see the, 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 the motion there. Oh, I didn't level the uh, track. So you're going to have to have one of your handier students get a uh, level from the uh, from wherever you guys have a level maybe the idea lab and level the track otherwise you could you might see a gravity component adding to whatever force here or subtracting to whatever force uh, you have here so let me try this again with uh, with the uh, wheels lined up in the grooves of the track so I'll press play again and then I'll actuate the whoops actuate the uh, Oh, okay. Looks like my finger didn't give the act, uh, the um, appropriate downward motion. I had some lateral motion there, and I caused, I pushed the cart off the track, out of its grooves using my finger by accident. Try this again. Okay, that is good. That is good. So, uh, uh, stop data collection. Oops. Okay, so let's see which which run which run was it that uh, that that was good. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, cancel, cancel. Okay, run number. Uh, huh. Uh, looks like I I may have overwritten the. I think I I think I may have overwritten my good run, so I'm gonna have to do that run again. All right. So let's see. Uh, this okay, so let me get the cart spring plunger good. Uh, am I in the grooves? Yeah, in the grooves. Okay, and then uh, let the motion sensor face the cart again. Okay, um, start data collection. 
and actuate the spring. And there it goes. And that's good. Okay, so uh, I'll just let that run for its until uh, it's done. Okay, that's good. You could always press uh, stop, so the play button here turns into a stop button uh, while the data collection is going on, but uh, I pressed something else and in doing so I wrote the data, so this time I just let it run. So here is the good data. So I'm gonna uh, highlight the uh, highlight the good data. Actually, I'm not sure if this 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 last bit where the slope is negative on the position graph is is what was part of the good data, but uh, that's okay. I don't really need to know right now. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, so, well, first. I'm going to store this run so I don't lose that data. So that was run number two. Um, that was run number one, I mean. So I'm going to go back to run number one. This now is stored. Uh, now it's, it, it's stored, but it's not saved. It's not saved onto a file. So to save it onto a file, you press file save, obviously. Now let me see if I could zoom into this. Uh, uh, auto scale once. Uh, let's zoom in. Okay, there it is. Okay, now here's what I wanted to show you, Brian. You can see right here, there's some spurious data there. You see that, th th this uh, downward peak, uh, that that comes from the sound wave of the motion sensor uh, bouncing wide somewhere else. So, um, you could, to, to, to get rid of that, you could just do the run over again and have your kids do it over and over again until they've got the motion sensor um, pointed right and everything is stable. You might have to tape something down or something like that. Uh, so that uh, you don't get the spurious data. However, you could also simply strike through spurious data, and here's how you do that. You go to the XY graph, so there it is, XY graph. I'm using my finger, but of course it's better to use the stylus because this is a resistive touch screen. Okay, and then uh, you gotta know where the spurious data was, actually. So let me go back to the graph. The spurious data is right here at how many seconds? 0.48 seconds. So I'm going to go to the XY graph, go to 0.48 seconds. There it is, 0.48 seconds. And then I'm going to strike through that data. Strike through data. Not delete data, not nothing like that, but just strike through that data. Okay? So once I've stricken, struck, struck through, <laughs> once I've struck through that data, uh, you see that spurious peak is gone. Right? So that's how you strike through. Uh, that, that's how you're. That, that's another way to remove spurious data, and that's it. Um, thank you.